Hi, Douglas Simonson here, coming to you from Mexico with another painting demonstration video. Today, I'm going to be painting a male nude of Mike T. Mike T is a guy who modeled for me in Hawaii in 2007. He's a bodybuilder, Filipino, Hawaiian, something, something, I don't know what all, but gorgeous. And he modeled for me in a little secret, secluded beach that I know of on the east end of Oahu near Makapu'u. This photo shoot gave me so much amazing material that I created hundreds of works of Mike T over the next couple of years, and I began to think of him as my muse. And in fact, I created an ebook called Muse, which has almost 100 drawings and paintings of Mike T. And you can find that ebook on my website in the ebook section. This is the photo I'm going to be working from today. And this is the tweaked version. The tweak that I've developed in Photoshop basically takes the millions of colors and shades of light and shadow that you see in the original photo and reduces them to a few dozen big shapes of light and shadow and color. And as you can imagine, this makes it much easier to translate the image into paint. But before I paint, I have to draw. And because this is going to be a small acrylic sketch on paper and not a big acrylic painting on canvas, I'm using an 11 by 14 sheet of Fabriano hot press watercolor paper, a paper that I like because it's so smooth. I'm not doing a real detailed drawing here. I'm just putting down the minimum information I need to start painting. And I want you to notice that there's a lot of correcting going on. A lot of beginning artists seem to think that you put the line down perfectly and move on. And it's not like that at all, at least not for me. It's a matter of put down the line, see what's wrong with it, erase it, and then try again to see if you can make the line better. It's a lot of erasing and correcting. Unless you're like a super genius prodigy of drawing, which I am not, it's really important for you to understand that so that you can be generous with yourself as you're drawing, allow yourself to make mistakes, and correct it to get to the final result. I'm going to explain what you're seeing here. I'm painting in acrylics, just in case that wasn't obvious. And that's the reason for the big container of water where I can rinse my brushes. On the left, that red squeeze bottle you see is filled with Liquitex Matte Medium. And this is something I squirt on whatever batch of paint I'm mixing at the moment to make it more fluid and sloppy, which I like, and also to make sure that the paint stays wet on the palette longer. I'm using a disposable palette, and that's what the tissues are for, to wipe the mixing area after I mix each batch of paint to make sure it's clean for the next batch of paint. I've already mixed the basic colors here, so I can just go ahead and start painting. I'm starting with the darkest areas of the body. And starting out with the darkest areas is usually a good strategy when you're painting, but not always. It depends on the painting. Anyway, that's what I'm doing here. Then once I get the darkest darks on the body in, I'm adding some gray-green, this gray-green mixture into the shadows. And it's not something you might expect. But when you have cool reflected light inside the shadows on a warm body, Turns out this mix of yellow, oxide, ultramarine blue, and alizarin and crimson can be just what you need. I'm spending a lot of time here on the body, probably more than I should. It's never a good idea to focus on any one area of the painting for too long. Okay, this is better. Now I'm starting to move on to the background. And as I'm adding these areas of the background, like the sky and the sand and the vegetation, I'm always watching to make sure that the colors are still working well. And they are in this case. Of course, I'm pretty experienced with this particular kind of subject matter, so I have a bunch of color mixes that I know I can depend on. One color I didn't mix yet, and I'm mixing now, is the dark green of the vegetation. I'm using sap green here with some ultramarine blue and some yellow oxide, and a little bit of red, a little bit of alizarin crimson thrown in, because red is the complement of green, and this green is going to be a shadow color, so we don't want it to be too vivid. It's really handy to know the complementary colors because that's a way you can make a vivid color duller, which is important when you have a shadow color. You never want too much color in the shadows. It doesn't look natural. 
Now that I've added the dark greens of the vegetation, you can see it makes a big difference. All of a sudden, everything is more three-dimensional, and the figure comes forward a lot, which is good. Now I'm working on the lighter areas of the body, areas where the sun is hitting the body, and moving on to the face. Face is always challenging for me because it's super important, and you want it to be right, but you have to be careful not to get too precious if you make it too finished and too precise. It's not going to match the rest of the painting, which is not precise and not detailed. The genitals are another area that's a little tricky because they're also kind of a focal point on a male nude painting or drawing. But you don't want to get too precious or detailed with them. Like the face, you want them to integrate well with the rest of the painting and not draw too much attention to themselves. So when you're painting them, you want to just focus on the patterns of light and dark and not think too much about what you're painting. That will help you integrate that area into the rest of the painting so that it appears natural. Now I'm adding the towel. Mostly white, but you see that little bit of red on the top is just the touch that this painting needs to give it some more color energy. Now I'm adding some finishing touches and there we go, it's finished. I call this painting My Tea in the Morning Sun. And you can see it now in the members only section of my website at douglassimonson.com. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching me and I hope you got some painting tips that you can use. If you did like this video, do me a favor and like and subscribe to my channel. That helps inspire me to do more videos. And if you got inspired watching me paint, go! Put on your painting pants and go paint!